Okay, so now that I'm not like crazy tired, I am going to explain a little solution to a problem I had yesterday. Um, this also is the first time I'm like using a keyboard and a mouse. I usually just use the touch screen, but I was hoping that it would be less jerky and a little bit kinder on the eyes. So basically, let me just go into um, play mode. I think that's what it's called. So basically what I wanted to have happen is to press this button. I think I need to work on the animation. Um, and it has a lovely sound, which I'm unsure if you can hear. Yeah, to have this, um, it's not a turnable, just an object rotate up there to each stage. And then when you press, uh, well, I guess when it gets to the end, you reset it. I didn't have a reset face. Um, Zek the Mad, which I learned about keypads from, basically taught me this technique. Um, their, uh, their rooms on the workshop, I would recommend getting into it and checking it out. Basically, it's the only reason I know how to do half of what I'm doing. Anyway, so that may seem really simple. It took most of my night last night, partially because I'm not that smart at these things. But that's what's so fun for me is I love learning about them, even if I'm not that smart about them. Um, so first of all, I'm going to do a couple of things. Let's remove the glass. I sincerely hate having to do that because I always have to put it back. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to do is get out. Oh my gosh. Wow. I'm not a pro yet at moving with this mouse, but hey, we do what we can. And um, like, I appreciate the new update with this like um, access coordinator. That's nice. It'll be really helpful. But yeah, so let's um, just bring these upstairs to take a look at what's going on here for, again, the simplest reaction. But I do hope, I want to theme some of the puzzle around the change of day. So the color outside the window, which will eventually be a graphic, changes when um, the phases up here change. So let's first look at the fact that what I first started out doing is I really wanted this little guy to rotate. So I started out with a parent that was around it. It couldn't be a turnable because you can't activate that in the way you want. So again, I, I parented this and then this um, empty is parented here and it is the child of, uh, yeah, or sorry, that empty is the child, this is the parent, and then this is the grandparent, and this is the great-grandparent, I guess you could say. Um, so basically each one has an animation that is set to rotate 90 degrees. Great. That's awesome. Um, so it would essentially make a full 360 degree revolution if each of the four are triggered. So um, as I said, triggered down here are four trigger boxes. Um, basically what I was thinking, I, I did this whole thing with locks and, and you just really can't do, I think, as much with locks as, as I hope. I, I still think they're sort of complicated, but um, anyway, let's see if I can remember what happened here. Yes, so one of the most important things in doing this kind of um, repeating um, motion in order is that you have to have multiple versions of the button. It's the same with the keypad. You have to have multiple keypads for the number of um, clicks or activations you want for it. So you'll see out here that I have each one of these four clock faces. There's four of them, and they are parented to these animations that push them forward when triggered to the front. So when this is triggered, so when this um, is pressed, basically lots of things happen. Um, some some other things over here, but uh, its own parent animation gets triggered, which pushes it back. This second one right here gets triggered, which pushes it forward. And then most importantly, I think, the empty over here in these little um, trigger areas gets pushed forward. And then it triggers this guy, yay. So again, this um, this gets pushed forward. Um, I'll explain that little relation to the lock later. Um, and then this trigger box right here, the enter actions. Again, I have this little thing with um, the, the planes over there, so we'll ignore that. But this trigger action basically does the rotation. Awesome, that's like all it really does when it enters. It does the rotation up here. It um, does a rotation, and then it does two rotations over there that, again, we won't get into. Um, and so each one is the exact same way. So you'll see it goes down. Ah, sorry about that. 
It goes down the line. Ooh, not friendly for motion sickness. And it goes down the line, and it goes down the line. So the way that this lock is working now, because I like resets, I think they're really awesome, and just learning how to do a reset felt fun because this game's not currently set up for it. And maybe one day uh, resets and this kind of logic will become really easy, but I will still feel proud for the things I learned. So anyway, it's an in-place lock, password 1111, um, doesn't disable because I want it to be able to happen again and again. Also, this is a fake wall, which comes into play later for the, um, the room I'm working on. So on unlock, it does like a tremendous amount of things, but um, really the important thing is on unlock, it, let's see here, it plays the exit animations of of a lot of the exit triggers, or essentially of all of these trigger boxes. Let's come here. Um, yeah, I think that's all the four of those. And then, oh yeah, and then it replays and resets um, this last um, empty, which will essentially reset it back because it hasn't been played again. And I believe, if I'm not totally wrong, it also um, resets and replays the first empty, which will then bring the clock, um, the original clock face back to the front. I cannot believe I did this at 3 a.m. Um, lastly, some really important advice. Again, just really find Zeke or Zek the Mad's um, workshop items on touchpads or key codes or keypads. It's incredible. My mind was blown. There's a scale system I want to try, but I don't know if I'm smart enough. It's important. Um, one of the tips that was given, it's important that when you start with these objects that will go into the triggers, that, um, that they are pickable objects to uh, attach it as the, um, as the trigger by object, and then you set it to static afterwards so that they can act as that trigger. Oh, and then lastly, uh, this was sort of fun. I had a noise play when it flips back, but it just was playing too soon. So I set the lock to play to an animation that does nothing, um, or maybe it does, it doesn't matter, but it has a duration that is the spacer um, before the um, sound that I want to play actually plays. And I think that's some of the way that Zach the Mad did a countdown timer, which again, blows my mind. It's essentially just making a full on clock with the mechanics here. You can make full circuit boards, it seems. I'm not that smart. So let's let's go ignoring that glass because eh, um, and take a look at this. This darn chair is in my way. So click it. You can see E goes up. Well, there, I didn't really label them. If I was smart, I would have thought. I, you can see there's two E's. Um, fourth one comes up and then they all go back because it resets. So hopefully that um, gets you some information about how this um, this little setup runs. I'm, again, I'm proud of it, even though I had to uh, get a lot of help from Zek the Mad's tutorials. I'm proud that I was able to take the information and bring it to my own. And yeah, if you, if you want to see, bring it to my own, like, build. I'm, yeah, changing the color outside because there's only certain things you'll be able to do in certain day states of the room. And this is just a small little tiny, oh, I keep forgetting what mode I'm in. This is just a small little tiny uh, section of the room I'm building for a group of people. So yeah. <laughs>